So why use bones? Well, because we can. I take no responsibility for eventual diseases, and all complaints will be ignored. Do subscribe if you appreciate the content. Welcome back to Bardscraft. This week I'm gonna try some new materials. Here I get some clay, and then something a bit more interesting. I got some bones. I found these on an island. These bones must have belonged to some seabirds, but now they will become terrain. Let's see what we can do. Before assembling the terrain on clay pieces, I needed to prepare the materials. I started with the planks. I cut out the planks from a thin sheet of XPS foam. This terrain is crudely constructed by orcs, so we will not use any measurements. No measurements, only big and small. I used a pen to make simple wood grain textures. You can use any thin pointy object for this, or then use a metal brush. When I was done with the wood textures, I took the planks and started cutting and tearing them into smaller pieces. My goal is to make them look like they are part of some crude craftsmanship. I made similar textures on the ends of the planks. You can also exaggerate these and even split the planks, like this. Alternatively, cut away random pieces and then apply the textures. Here are all the planks I will be using, but let's put them aside, because adventure calls. I sailed to an island in the Finnish archipelago. On the shores of Söderskär, I found the bones that inspired this terrain. I found some more bones around the campsite. Yeah, that's disgusting. Uh, but, 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 isn't this dangerous? There can be germs in the bones. Shut up. Some heat treatment will surely take care of this. Okay, that's about enough. After heating the bones in the oven, I was ready to start working with the clay. I cut myself a big chunk of clay. I proceeded by shaping it with my fingers, using some water. To make bases and terrain in general, you don't have to be a master clay worker. This is very easy and refreshing. A toddler could do it. And too much XPS foam is unhealthy, so this is a nice change. In order to not make the other materials messy, I kept a bowl of water nearby, to wash my hands. Hmm, where should I put this bone? I think it needs something to rest on. A small chunk of clay. I shaped a small stone wall from the piece of clay. This is really simple to do. I formed stones into the wall. And of course, I used a bone as a sculpting tool. Anything else is out of the question. This is just a small part of the terrain, so it will look good enough as it is. When doing the paint job, I was positively surprised by the quality of the stone texture. I attached the wall to the base. I had no idea what I was doing, but in the end, it seemed to work just fine. I dug a small hole, then took the bone and pushed it into the clay. Once the clay dries, the bone will stay in place. A wet finger is good for cleaning things up. Now I will make the barricades from wood and bone. A 
few planks can lean against the bone like this. I made deep holes into the clay, then stuck in the planks. Then I cleaned up and reshaped the clay with wet fingers, and proceeded by adding planks in a chaotic manner. It looks like we could add some pointy sticks. I found my toothpicks and cut them into big and small pieces. They can be used for a few purposes. One is to pin planks together for durability and for looks. Okay, that looks good, but it's not dangerous enough. Some spikes and spears should take care of that. I stuck in toothpicks of different length pointing towards whatever enemy is on the other side of the barricade. I made it look brutal and crude by making the sticks point in different directions. The less you think, the better it will look. I felt like a bone was missing from this place, there. Then I added a few more planks to this piece. Now I'm also using glue to attach a plank to wood surfaces and bone. Whoever is holding this defensive position might want to lift a banner to show their mighty presence. I made a pole from a barbecue stick and poked it into the clay. It's a bit too small, let's make it big. Later I will make some simple banners for the poles. I quickly added some more wood pieces around the flagpole. This is looking great. Before making more, I move the piece aside to let it dry on a safe place. My cutting mat is not a safe zone. Now I will show you the crazy things and techniques I figured out for the rest of the pieces. Now this part is fun, but not for the weak-hearted wimps. Occasionally, I also used glue to attach bone to bone. The bones are puny and fragile. This will look good. Unfortunately, no bone marrow was found. Yet. Not all bases have to be flat and boring. Here I shaped clay into high ground. Then I was unsure of how to make stone textures on clay, but I just went for it anyway. My idea was to create a jagged, rocky look by making random grooves into the clay. The best advice I have for crafting is to just do it. Shut off your internal dialogue and just make things happen. Yes, it's the bone marrow. I found it. I'll put this piece here. That'll show them. Is that a tendon? Yes. Now we can truly call this terrain of orcs. The one-eyed god of war and slaughter agrees. The clay has now dried overnight. It's pretty sturdy, but I'll still add some cardstock on the bottom here. This is just some cardstock from food packaging. Here on Bardscraft, we don't recycle to save the planet. We do it in the name of minis and terrain. I applied lots of PVA glue, then put the bases on the cardstock. I will cut out the right shapes later. If the clay cracks, the terrain piece will stay intact. However, in this episode, I dare not do any scientific durability tests. I was impatient and started cutting out the pieces before the glue had dried completely. But no problems were encountered here. As your healthy eyes can see, I made the bases a bit larger. Now there is room for more spices. Um, flocking. Before working on further details, I will apply a base coat and paint the wood. First, I mixed a dark earthy green from brown, green and black acrylic paint. 
When painting, I was extra cautious not to get paint on the bone, since the bone surfaces will not be covered with paint at all. I painted the smooth ground with the earthy green. For the tight places, I had to use a smaller brush. Then I mixed a dark grey and started painting the rocky surfaces. After that, I colored the ruined walls with the same paint. The clay had some really small holes and gaps in it, so I made sure not to miss any of them. The planks will be covered with black first. Using a slightly watered down paint, I was able to get black into the wood grain textures. Due to the nature of the terrain, some of the surfaces were a bit tricky to reach, but I managed. This was a good test of patience. When eventually getting paint on the bone, I cleaned it away with a wet brush. This seemed to work like a black wash for the bone. Someone might say, a happy little accident. Then, all the toothpicks were also covered with black. I proceeded by painting the wood with a golden brown. I simply mixed yellow and brown to get this color. When painting the planks, the idea is to only apply paint to the outer surfaces, leaving the grooves black. I also painted a bit on the toothpicks with the same color. When I was done with this, I tried adding even more yellow into my brown mixture. I lightly painted some parts of the wood with this orange-like color. It gives some nice variation to the wood. I kept painting more with the orange, as it seems to be working pretty well. We're still gonna do a bit of painting, but before that I went to the grocery store and got some flocking. This is dill. I think we can use the dill just like this. First, I'm gonna try it without glue. Yeah, this looks really good. I don't think we have to paint anything. Perhaps we can do a bit of dry brushing with yellow. In order to attach the flocking, I covered the bases with a PVA glue dilution. So water and white glue. The fun part is sprinkling on the flocking. I fully covered the ground with the herbs. It smells really nice, by the way. I figured it's easier to do this with a thick dilution of PVA glue. So just add a bit of water into your mixture, not much. I thought, why not apply a bit of flocking on the bones or planks? It's gonna look a bit like moss once we are done here. Two hours later, the glue has now dried. To further secure the flocking in place, I covered the grassy surfaces with a more watery dilution of PVA glue. I just need to get it everywhere. The glue has now dried and everything seems to stay in place. And the flocking still looks good. Before moving on with the paint job, I'm gonna add some more details. To make the spearheads and blades, I needed something pointy and thin. I whittled a barbecue stick into a thinner shape, then cut out a tiny spearhead. Keep in mind the orcs. These blades are supposed to be crude. Here is another spearhead. I also damaged some of the blades by cutting away small pieces. I will use the worst glue for this, PVA glue. I attach the spearheads to some of the toothpicks. With this glue, it's a bit tricky. Here we have a tiny glaive. Alright, 
Here you can see some of the spears and blades I made. I think this one is pretty cool. Look, I also made a cute orc sword. The banners are super simple, but will turn out great. I cut out a flag shape from cardstock, then started tearing up the edges with my blade. The piece will look worn and less like just paper. Then I bent the banner into a better shape. I made a few different banners, you'll see them soon. Now I just need to glue them in place. Okay, they seem to stay there better than the spearheads. Good. With that out of the way, we can get to the more satisfying part of the build. I'll start by painting the details, and later we'll see how the grocery store flocking turns out. I'm beginning by working on the stone walls. I applied a gentle layer of grey with small amounts of paint on the brush. I was happy to see how good the stonework looks, considering how simple it is. I used the brown paint to apply a layer on the highlights of the rock textures. The grey we used for the walls would also work well here, but I wanted to have some variation by adding an earthy color. I continued by dry brushing the stone walls with a tan. This color is called Drake Tooth. Usually I don't paint terrain with miniature paints, this time I treated myself. I like the walls, I think these layers of paints are enough for my taste. Let's see how the same dry brush works on the rocky surfaces on the base. Oh, that looks really good. This is the best rock textures I've ever done with only three layers of paint. Press that like if you agree. I also used the Drake brush, Drake tooth to dry brush parts of the poles and spear shafts. From a gaming distance at the table, this does look like wood, more so than an unpainted toothpick. Leather brown. I can imagine that the orcs have not yet discovered fabric, so I will paint the banner as some ragged bits of leather. I think this seems a bit too dark, so I added a messy layer of drake tooth. Now I was ready to start painting some smaller details on the banners. I don't know what this is, some kind of symbols or orcish art, who knows. The orc skill in the name of the one-eyed god, so I painted an unblinking eye. Then I proceeded by having fun with some blue paint. By painting different lines and dots, the blue seemed to complement the red. I have to say, I like the banners almost as much as I like the bone marrow part. The bones felt a bit naked, without the flesh and all, so I painted a few orc-friendly symbols. And here, the orcs have made accountable documentation for the number of human folk they have killed. Also, some touching words to keep unwanted guests away. Lovely. The blades of the spears and halberds require painting. These are not guns, but I used gun metal to paint the weapons. And I didn't forget the sword. I also painted some of the toothpicks with the same color. This is a magical wash, and some details I made on the sword. I applied the dark tone wash on all metallic surfaces. The sword I carved is no work of art, but it suits well with the theme of this terrain. Then I continued by dry brushing the blades with white. I tried to get most of the paints on the edges, so that the metal would look nice and shiny. Okay, that's good. For extra effects, you could paint some rust on the metallic pieces. Now comes the moment of truth. Is dill good flocking? I started by dry brushing the grass with yellow. This looks promising, and on top of all, it's really cheap. Alright, this flocking seems to work. Let's take a closer look. Oh 
Okay, this was awesome. Just the kind of terrain I want to have. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to Bardscraft. I make things like this every week. If you really like these videos, you can join the path of tabletop crafting on Patreon. There you can support the making of these videos. There are still a few more images I want to show you. Then go discover what else I have made on the channel. Have fun and I wish you epic crafting.